There is a substantial risk of loss associated with trading forex, binary options, stocks, or equities, collectively, asset classes. Only risk capital should be used for trading. Trading in any asset classes is not appropriate for everyone. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. No representation is being made that investors will make profits or will not sustain losses. Before trading in any asset classes, investors should consult with their professional broker, financial advisor, or financial consultant to determine whether trading asset classes is appropriate. Investors who trade in any asset classes should only do so if the capital used for this purpose represents funds that an investor can afford to lose without adversely impacting the investor's lifestyle. No trading strategy or methodology is without risk of loss. No trading strategy is risk-free and no trading strategy can guarantee profits or freedom from losses. Investors risk losing the cost to execute any transaction, including associated commissions or fees. You should carefully consider whether trading in any asset class is appropriate for you in light of your investment experience and financial resources. Any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. None of the statements or materials in the Ovoria Prime chat rooms constitute a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell. Welcome to the Tuesday version of the Midweek Software Strategy Session. My name is Steve Vettel. Today is the 23rd of November. A couple days to Turkey Day, gobble gobble for everybody in the U.S. Happy Thanksgiving. This is going to be a super fast call. I am already on vacation. <clears throat> Probably should have taken this time to note I wasn't going to be presenting this, but I figured, hey, I'm also going to record and uh, get it all taken care of. One thing I, I must say is that our Hawkeye guys have been along with the Arrow guys clobbering it. So I would highly suggest you guys take advantage of those guys because they've been doing quite well. All right, on the news feed here, just going through some of the stuff. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so a uh, good shout out to Mariska. <clears throat> um, I have probably the vast majority of people that have pinged me up with these big uh, moves that we've seen take place inside of the markets. Just a quick peek here for those overseas. Today's Tuesday here. You can see we've made it through most of these news reports, but um, do have some GDP-based stuff um, below. Do know that tomorrow is the FOMC meeting minutes. Um, as you may have heard, Jerome Powell is going to be reconfirmed for another term as Fed Chairman, Lyle Brainerd, <clears throat> is a very smart lady, uh, was a close second. Um, but I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm <clears throat> I don't know much about her background. I do know that she is more of uh, a loose cannon, if you will. So there's a chance that this unwinding, which we expect the Fed to start to do next summer, by the way, I could be totally wrong in that previous forecast because of the fact um, now that just inflation has sort of seeped into everything. Um, you can't go raising interest rates um, when you have inflation that is pervasive across many developed economies right so you can there may be a pushing off of that because uh, it could reject typically as i had mentioned in a little more exhaustive detail when you have um an inflationary environment you typically have overreactions we had a lot of this happen in the latter part of the 70s uh to massive inflation and it actually created a deflationary environment into the early 80s which was very problematic um, it had to be completely straightened out. So thanks to President Reagan and the team, Paul Volcker and a bunch of the guys just came in and completely cleaned house as far as the way we ran monetary policy, thus started the big bull market of 1983, which has almost continued to this day. So, <clears throat> um, and the important thing to know is that the great thing about Jerome Powell is that he's not a fed speak guy remember this is a lot of what was a lot of finger pointing at alan greenspan back in the day for fed speak nobody really understood um you know what it was and a lot of these academics that just never spent any real time on wall street like jerome powell has um just didn't understand how money supply worked from a real world economic perspective they just understand academics right so i've, I've always had an issue with that uh, personally, because I think it takes real world experience in terms of understanding, you know, the multi levels of M1 through M3 supply and how it affects monetary policy, because we're seeing the opposite take place 
of what we thought was going to be the case, right? So that being said, let's move into charts. No surprise from our many, many talks of a long period of time up until, I'd say probably like the mm, beginning of July, last uh, two summers ago, when we broke below this area, spent a ton of time under it, we came up against, and this, remember this is a weekly chart, each one of these candles represents a singular week. Uh, looks like we've had a whole bunch of people just join us late. I'm running through a quick call of what's going on this week, kind of helping try and keep you out of um, some of the concerns. Um, I could tell you the vast majority of the people that have contacted me as big builders around the world looking to see what's going on. Uh, the vast majority of the builders that have contacted me didn't even see my um, presentations either Tuesday or Saturday. So shame on you guys because, uh, you know, some of your uh, peeps have lost some money going against this trend, which I highly did not recommend for at least the last three or four months. So we can't see that Stevie's out there sitting on that wall, right? Have you ever seen the movie A Few Good Men? Just a fantastic movie, by the way. Um, <clears throat> Jack Nicholson won the Academy Award for that role. He's he's uh, a tough Marine. He's like, you know, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall, right? But if I'm on that wall and you're not listening to me, I can't help you. <laughs> so start listening and broadcast it out. It's the best thing I could do is get everybody agitated enough with my uh, constant droning on about this that they will just tune in, right? <clears throat> tune in and make money or tune in and not lose lots of money because you put great risk control measures in place. So with all that being said, DXY, keep in mind that usually when something breaks, and I'm not going to go into this on and on, but usually when something breaks a big level, of um honestly i really think this red line should just been carried straight across because it was still resistance even though it stopped right here i actually disagreed with that it would literally just continue to draw that line across uh, because as soon as it broke i said stay out of the way hop on the caboose don't step in front of the freight train and it's continued to just rip through this area down here which is a very low volume, it's actually a huge low volume valley where there just wasn't a lot of trade in at least the last few years, right? So those are areas, what I call air pockets, some people call them zippers, you know, whatever. Typically, once you crack into an area like that, from an auctioning standpoint, its price will almost always auction completely to the other side um, until you get some sellers. Nobody stepped in front of the sellers. This has a lot to do with the fact um, you know, just, just inflationary forces, you know, it has the surprising thing about that is if you look at the opposite of this, you know, you would have expected, you would have thought just gold would continue to rip up, you know, but look at like a daily chart as an example. <clears throat> um, it's met with just a ton of sellers, um, since it's high. Now, in all fairness, there's been a big equity dump the last two days as I just jump back to the S&P chart here. Let's see if I can expand this out a little more so you can see the, the carnage that has ensued. <clears throat> this is one of the only things I hate about trading views. You can't roll or wheel the scroll. <clears throat> uh, but essentially we had a high right around 47.50 on the S&P 500, 500 largest capitalized companies in the country. Um, 100 point drop, mm, not quite, close. Pretty nice, you know, retrace, it's held. Um, I'm not gonna get into any of the other areas of level, but it seemed to me there probably should be a support line showing up from our fancy triple moving average bits <clears throat> and also the um, our squeeze zone indicator. Let's see what else. All right, so. Carnage in the queues is a little more to keep in mind if you're trading. This is not something that I try and catch these dips. I'd rather sell the rips as they move back up. So a lot of uncorrelated things taking place in currency, commodity, and equity land. And I'm just sort of jumping around, putting through some highlights. I'm not going to go through all these currencies, but I will take a look at GBP CAD. 
from a daily perspective. Um, the surprising thing about this, let me just reset the scale. <clears throat> Put in three days of doji. It's almost like it's coiling and it wants to rip again higher. But for this, I always start DXY. Then I move to GB. Uh, then I move to the the pound. I want to see what's going on with that in relation to the dollar. And then I'll move to in some cases JPY. Again, nothing going on. So it's almost like a foretell <clears throat> of um, continued sort of sideways trading slash indecision that we're seeing for <clears throat> the main currency, the neo trades. Um, looks like a couple people came in late. I'm going to run just to, through this real quick, you guys, because I'm actually uh, I'm already on vacation. <clears throat> so that is what I'm seeing going on in main currency and equity land. If you take a note, some of the corrections in broad-based equity markets around the world, like the DAX um, or <clears throat> you, the FTSE, we've had um, you know pretty sharp pullbacks and some cases, many of these are on further pullbacks. Like a lot of this is due to this crazy vax slash lockdown mask, crazy ass mandate stuff that we're seeing going on in a lot of these countries, <clears throat> which has really just reached a fever pitch. <clears throat> and it's unfortunate because it's really is beginning to hamper corporations' ability to sell products and to earn revenues, right? So, what else? Stock 600, same pullback. Looks very similar to the DAX. It's typically will run almost perfectly correlated. One has more stocks in the index than the other. One is a little more broadly diversified than the other. Merging markets. Weekly chart on this. Just want to see. <clears throat> really not the cracks in the armor you would have thought here. I mean, usually emerging markets would have just been clobbered down to probably somewhere in this level after that period of time. What else? Gold's been surprising. Um, I think a lot of this is due to the release. I don't know if it's been a formal release of from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve by the administration. I mean, they only released, what, three days of oil use? <laughs> so I don't know how much, you know, we use about 12 million barrels a day, a little bit more in some cases. So if you release 50, you've only got basically a few days of reserves. How much impact that's going to make. Um, what's going on in coinage land? Not much more than from what I talked this weekend. Daily chart. Oop. Maybe towards the edge, or maybe a little crack in the armor, possibly dropping below this level if you're doing any type of Bitcoin investing, either via the futures markets and ETF or the coin itself. Most I'm going to take a look at US CAD of note, again, daily chart. Notice we've just continuing its trend up. <clears throat> More than likely, it's probably going to try. If the strength of the dollar continues to more than likely auction all the way to the top of the range that it's been to see if maybe they can find some sellers at that point. Let's see. Down towards the lower part of the range. If you're trading any of the Aussie US relationship here. So dollar Swiss has finally made it to the upper end of its range that it hasn't seen for quite some time. <clears throat> Don't know that this necessarily leads to some sort of rip break above it, um, but we're at it in terms of resistance here at this 
uh, spot 9342 area. So if we break above this, more than likely we're going to see, you know, this is obviously all predicated upon the, the US dollar continuing to rise, right? But if we break above this level, probably going to see this range all the way up here. Pretty big move. It happened as quickly as we've seen the dollar. Just keep in mind, rather be riding the caboose on this one, not step in front of the train. much in a lot of rollover in primary equities i mean even companies have just been absolutely clobbering it like upstart these guys have just had an absolute stellar run off the bottom i mean look at that look at that retracement it's a 50 percent retracement off the high you know it's not happening to the big dogs why does this damn bison keep staying here? It's like I, I deleted and it keeps showing up again. Let's just. There we go. All right. <clears throat> yeah, this, this is kind of troubling, I must say. Um, when you're big leaders like a Dynavax and some of the ones that just been on an absolute tear, HubSpot, you know, I mean, look, look what's happened to Celsius Holdings. And in all fairness, this is. Um, there's been supply chain disruptions as far as their inventory. They've had a lot of issues. They got a big downgrade. You know, this is one of the hottest drink makers on the planet right now. Stocks up a bunch, but you've seen almost a thirty percent retrace, a uh, thirty percent retrace off the top. Roblox, you know, huge gap up. Shorts chasing this dog have made a bunch of money off of that high. Uh, but typically, when you see big leaders falling huge in front of, um, you know, laggard stocks like you know something like a GE or a Procter and Gamble or some sort of stalemate or a stalwart type of corporation, is usually a big heads up that a correction's coming. So a lot of the leaders are falling over. <clears throat> Olaplex, I want to be a buyer of this when it just absolutely crashes below its level. <clears throat> These guys have some sort of hairspray that just nobody will shut up about. Uh, it's supposed to be like the best stuff ever. Um, let's see what else. I always, I always keep a monitor what's going on in Berkshire. These guys have been really strong in this whole correction, man. Just the portfolio is really playing out for these guys, which has been a rare thing for Warren and Charlie and the guys. <clears throat> a bunch of 90 year olds running your portfolio. <laughs> I was getting a kick out of that. <clears throat> Look at these China stocks. I mean, Bob, what a terrible investment this has been. Just absolutely hammered on the Chinese government pulling back. And the only reason Shopify isn't in that same clobbered situation like a JD.com is, is uh, a lot of these guys are just, their, their payment systems are just absolutely killing it globally. But Baba, man, you know, they basically made Jack Ma disappear. <laughs> and, uh, this company's value has been cut almost by two thirds. So, real sad story there. Uh, Didi, these guys are a great example of uh, just super, super global electronics um, payments processor and platform. Just been a, a great stock story, but just absolutely got killed on uh, these corrections. So, anyway, brought a little equities flavor into the mix today. Um, do keep in mind, since I've got this question a bunch um, from some of the builders, you guys, um, if, and, and most of the question falls along this line, it's, <clears throat> if you want to trade Forex accounts for others in the U.S. as a U.S. citizen, right? I don't care if you're trading equities, futures, you know, whatever, the vast majority of states um, require you to have more than five clients before you need to register with FINRA. Okay? It's a financial industry regulatory authority. It's what's called a Series 65 financial advisor. This is, and, I, and I would caution anybody in this because this exam used to be quite simple 20 years ago when I took it, but it is exceptionally difficult to pass this today. It's like taking the bar exam or taking your medical boards. So just know what you're getting into 
Um, not saying you can't do it all for it, uh, but it is going to take up a good two months of your life and several hundred dollars um, and close to a thousand dollars in study and, and class costs. So um, I would encourage it as a formal financial advisor, but there's a whole bunch of other work that comes along with that. So if you keep your client base to under five, you don't need to register as an advisor. If you're dealing with overseas clients, it's a whole different um, game because as a U.S. citizen managing money for overseas clients, you're really not under the regulatory authority of, you know, either the European body or the U.S. So it's, it's almost like it's, you know, I don't know how to answer that question. I, <clears throat> they're not requiring it um, with the exception of the state of Texas. So before you manage money for anybody professionally, uh, you have to be registered in Texas. Every other state, it's what's called a five rule. Right. That's it. Happy holidays. Although I should get away from saying that, right? Happy Thanksgiving. Everybody a safe week. Eat lots of turkey. Pass off from all the trip to fans. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank you.